The most straightforward metric is mean absolute error, or MAE. Here's the fancy mathematical equation for how to compute it. It's not as complicated as it looks, so let's break it down. Let's say we have n ratings in our test set that we want to evaluate. For each rating, we can call the rating our system predicts y, and the rating the user actually gave x. Just take the absolute value of the difference between the two to measure the error for that rating prediction. It's literally just the difference between the predicted rating and the actual rating. We sum those errors up across all n ratings in our test set and divide by n to get the average, or mean. So mean absolute error is exactly that, the mean or average absolute values of each error in rating predictions. Remember, error is bad, so you want the lowest MAE score you can get, not the highest. Let's look at a simple example. Let's say we just have four ratings in our test set. On the first one, our recommender system predicted a rating of 5 when the actual rating was 3. The absolute error in this case is 2. We just do that for every rating, add them all up, and divide by 4. So the MAE score in this case is 1.5. It's just that simple. A slightly more fancy way to measure accuracy is root mean square error, or RMSE. This is a more popular metric for a few reasons, but one is that it penalizes you more when your rating prediction is way off and penalizes you less when you were reasonably close. The difference is that instead of summing up the absolute values of each rating prediction error, we sum up the squares of the rating prediction errors instead. Taking the square ensures we end up with positive numbers, like absolute values do, and it also inflates the penalty for larger errors. When we're done, we take the square root to get back to a number that makes sense. So again, you can just take the name of the metric literally. Root means that we take the square root of the whole thing when we're done, mean refers to an average, and square error is the square of each individual rating prediction error. Let's walk through that same example. In the first rating in our test set, the error between the predicted rating of 5 and actual rating of 3 is 2, and the square of that error is 4. We just keep doing that for each rating in our test set and add them all up. Then divide by the number of ratings, take the square root, and this time we end up with 1.87. That's higher than the MAE score for this same data of 1.5 because it's penalizing us hard for predicting a rating of 4 on an item that the user hated with a rating of 1. Again, remember high RMSEs are bad. You want low error scores, not high ones. Now, like we said, accuracy isn't really measuring what we want recommender systems to do. Actual people couldn't care less what your system thinks you should have rated some movie you already saw and rated. Rating predictions themselves are really of limited value. You don't really care if my system thinks you'll rate up three stars. You care mostly about what my system thinks about the best movies for you to go see are, and that's a very different problem. So how do we end up focusing on accuracy and RMSC scores in the field of recommender system research? Well, a lot of it dates back to 2006, when Netflix offered a $1 million prize to the first person or group to achieve a 10% improvement on Netflix's own RMSE score on a data set of movie ratings it made public. This was called the Netflix Prize, and that million dollar prize spurred a lot of research into recommender systems. Since the prize was based on achieving low RMSE scores, that's what everybody focused on, and that focus has rippled through time even today. And to be fair, there's not a lot of ways to measure a recommender system given only historical data to work with. Ideally, you want to measure how real people react to recommendations for things they've never seen before, and you just can't do that offline. If you're curious, the prize was awarded in 2009 to a team called Bellcore, and we'll talk about how they did it later on. But Netflix didn't actually end up using their research because they realized that RMSE just doesn't matter much in the real world. What does matter is which movies you put in front of users in a top-end recommender list and how those users react to those movies when they see them recommended.